Okay. Good morning, KW Prosperity. It's Matt and Mary Beth here with you today. It is Tuesday, May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> Normally it would be a little bit different, uh, but today we're indoors. We should have actually done something festive today. What? We should have done something festive today. All right, well, maybe yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so um, for some reason, it seems like your video is frozen on my, oh, there you are. Um, perfect. So today we're going to dive in. Yesterday we talked about the four foundational models. Uh, so we really talked about the economic model and the uh, lead generation model being you know, really the, the two pillars, but then obviously the budget model and organizational model as well, which we're going to really dive into over the next couple of days. Uh, mm -hmm. So right now we're on page 129 in our book on the economic model. Um, and for those watching on Facebook Live, on Zoom, um, on Mary Beth, your watch party that you just created, um, I have to say that in the seven years I've been with KW, I've never seen anyone talk about the economic model um, better than you and who describes it and walks through it as succinct as you. Um, and really as easy to follow as you. So I'm excited to be able to have you uh, really help lead this today. Oh, thanks, Matt. Uh, I do love the economic model because although many of you might not know, I am a numbers nerd. I love the numbers. It's just um, a bit of reducing to the ridiculous. So looking at a big goal and saying, I want to make $100,000, I want to make a million dollars, I want to lose 100 pounds, I want to lose 10 pounds. Yeah. And understanding that there's just a formula, we break it down. Um, and so I also want to go back to this part of the book, which is page 123. Mm -hmm. And I want those of you who have a book to make sure that you revisit that often. If there is a problem in your business, I can assure you, it's going to be in one of those models, okay? So I say 123 over 122 because 123 gives a little bit more uh, information on what each model, the, the formulas inside each model. And so that's also where I'd like, if, if you do have a pen, as we go through this, I, I encourage you to write inside the book as we uh, talk about some notes because, you know, all these notes in here are either from consultations or taking a, a course called the 24 topics over and over again. Yeah. And yeah. I would really just highly encourage you to just kind of earmark that and, and take notes as we go along. So if you remember from yesterday, we talked about economic model is the last part of the foundational triangle, yeah. which is the earn, think part. And then we move into lead generation is earn, budget model is net, and we get to the top of that triangle, which is receive, and that represents the organizational model. So on that page 123, I just advise you to just jot those down, think next to economic, uh, earn, lead gen, net, budget, and receive organizational. Yep. So Matt, you want to dive into uh, yeah. page 129? Uh, you mean 129 on the economic model? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so it says with the, there's three key areas for the economic model. Number one, you have to focus on the numbers you must hit. Number two, focus on the appointments. And number three, focus on conversion rates. Uh, so what we're going to do is as we look at page 130 and 131 specifically, um, we're going to talk mm -hmm. about what numbers uh, you must hit and knowing those numbers. Um, because ultimately, you know, as, as Gary writes on page 130, he says, the greatest thing your economic model will tell you is what numbers you must hit in order to net the income you want to re receive. So knowing if you want to earn or net 100,000, 500,000, a million, um, this model will help you know what numbers you must hit. That's right. So I would, I would say that you need to have an idea of what your budget is yep. for the year in your business in order to plug that number in in your in one of the factors that will make up expenses yep. 
So before we dive into the calculation and how we arrived to some of the numbers, let's have a conversation around what, if you'd go to the, the blank one on page number four, the slide number four. Yep. So let's have a conversation around what some of these numbers may mean. You have to know two things. Well, you actually you need to know a couple more than two things, but you need to definitely know, the first thing you need to know is what is the goal? So what is the total goal of money? Money made in your pocket, okay? And actually this one does not show you like page, <clears throat> page 131 in the book, but page 131 in the book, and Matt, I do believe it's on a different slide if you were to find it, um, does show you what your net income would be. Then what we need to do is, nope, this is your listings needed calculator. Yeah, that's the other one that I have. No, there's a, it's actually the picture of the book. So if we could, um, if we could just get out of this screen for a second and go back to your book. Yep, hold on. And that's cool. Yeah, I don't know. It's, there yeah. we go. Um, okay. Do you have a clean book on page 131? Yeah. Okay. If you could show that for a second, go a little closer to the camera. Yep. A little closer and up a bit. A little bit more. Right there. Okay. So what Matt is showing you right here is you have your net income, your expenses. And if we would take our net income, which is what we would like to have after we pay all of our expenses, we would then come to what our total gross revenue is. So let's review that for a second. Matt, you can put that down. Okay. What we're talking about is having that goal and i want to encourage everybody that we are in may if we get out of this quarantine house or uh house rest, um you know stay at home like order. <laughs> if we get when we get out of this i believe it will be in june we can still be doing work right now we've been working for the last two months just planting seeds right so I want us to think about that we did have some opportunity to close some business in the beginning of the year. That was the beginning of 2020. Yep. And now when we get mm -hmm. out of here and we still have all of June, July, August, September, October, November, December, we have seven months to create our income for 2020. So yep. it is up to us mm -hmm. to make decisions on what our actions will be to get us what we need, want, desire, intend to have for 2020. So we do still need to maybe throw out the 2020 original goal. And for many of us, we were at vision 2020, right? Yep. We may have to, um, you know, reassess the goal. And for some of us, we're saying, nope, we're sticking to the same goal. We're going to just double down and work uh, smarter and create more leads and be more efficient. Yep. So, okay. So we know how much money we want to make or we intend to make, which is our net income. Yep. Then we need to work backwards and say, what would our expenses be? So in our, in our company, we have what's called a cap. So we know what is the most money we would pay to the broker. Um, the, three, the three numbers that we typically see add up into there as the expenses would be your brokerage fee or any kind of royalty fee that you need to pay that happens when you close a transaction. Mm -hmm. Your uh, operational expenses and operational expenses would include education, uh, license renewal, MLS data, all sorts of stuff. And we'll get that in the budget. Yep. And so we'll put all that together and that will be your expenses. Now in the MREA model, according to the budget, your expenses, your expenses can, uh, they can get to a point of 50 or 60% of the business. And so, um, you know, we like to work with true expenses. So each conversation is individual as to what your budget will be. So if we are looking at this uh, economic model and Matt, I, I'd ask you to go back to that slide yeah. and let's just yeah. say we have come to the agreement that 
let's go with that hundred thousand dollar model. Let's throw that in there for a second. Yep. Now, here we go. So in this case, this person here wants to make two hundred thousand in gross income. Mm -hmm. So once the expenses are paid, the net income is probably going to be somewhere around one fifty or so. Okay. And so we start this one at the top, the gross revenue from sellers and the gross revenue from buyers. So we can all agree that when a seller sells, a buyer is also sold. And so if we were to look at what is the ideal percentage of your business that should be coming from sellers versus buyers, one would say a really healthy, mature business is going to be 50-50. When you're just starting out, you may be more buyer heavy, when you're growing and maybe you don't have a buyer's agent, you may be more listing heavy. And depending on the season and the location of your market, you, you may just differ off of that 50-50. So you know well, where, your, where your money comes from. Yeah, and Mary Beth, just to jump in on that, I mean, we've been talking about through the shift and with the MREA, a, a properly marketed listing is going to yield one buyer. So that's where the 50-50 usually comes in there. Well, that's right. I mean, properly marketed listings should yield even more than one buyer. You know, it should yield two transactions is what has been, um, you know, proven evidence with numbers and on National Association of Realtors. And yet you, in, in this type of atmosphere of online lead generating, you really can create many more than two that will close over the course of let's say, the next few years. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking at just what would sell this year and you could count on, I would say for every listing you have, you, you would have a buyer that comes from it. And, um, and also though, the other way I'm looking at it is when a house does sell, there is a buyer side and a seller side. So there are, there are equal amount of buyer opportunities and seller opportunities in a market. Okay. And so if this person wants to make 200,000, Matt, mm -hmm. and that's the gross revenue, the GCI checks that would be written to the brokerage for that agent, we would divide that money and say, well, 100,000 should come from the sellers and 100,000 could come from the buyers. Yep. Now, mm -hmm. this is where we start to um, pay attention to your skill. And this is where we start to say, this is where we can make improvements. Mm -hmm. or this is where we really shine and why we can make more money than the average agent, okay? Commission. So the second number there is 2.5. On the seller side, you have the ability to control what you as a listing agent take as a commission. And so most agents are comfortable with a 5% commission. And yet some agents really know their worth and maybe put a little extra into the marketing extra into the script and role play, and their average listing is about 6%. So you would go ahead and put your number yep. of what your typical yep. list side is. And on the, on the other side is the buyer side commission, and, and you could argue with me and say that you really don't have any control over that, mm -hmm. that in the MLS, the seller's agent and the seller have dictated uh, yeah. what the, the Cobro commission is, right? Yep. And I would challenge you to just think about that. And do we have exclusive buyer agency contracts in New Jersey? Yes, we do. And pretty much in all of the states, you can arrange for a buyer agreement contract. Mm -hmm. It's just not as common as a seller listing agreement. And yet we would ask you, why do you work with sellers exclusively and yet not ask for the same loyalty and commitment from a buyer. Yeah. So that's just a whole nother class. We could get into that after this. And so then the next thing is you're going to take that hundred thousand. Let's just stay on the seller side for a second, because we understand that the seller activities are going to dictate what we have to advertise and market to generate some buyer interest. So a hundred thousand, and we are going to divide that number by two and a half percent to get the total sold volume mm -hmm. of sellers. So in this situation, if we sell $4 million in real estate at two and a half percent, we are gonna generate $100,000 in commission. Okay, so the next number we need to know and we need to plug that in is what is your average price? Your average sales price. Now, for many of us, our listing side is different than our buyer side. 
And if you are brand new and you don't have an average, I would say talk to your leader and go with the average inside of your office or inside of a market that you intend on working. And so in this situation, we just use an average of 500,000 as an average sale price. We know in our marketplace of Passaic County, Wayne, New Jersey, that is about where we're at. Our average in our market center is about 450. Yeah. Okay. So, now we plug that number in and we just do some more division. We take the 4 million and we divide how many, how many homes would we need to sell at an average of 500,000 if we sold 4 million? So we take 4 million, we divide it by 500,000 and we'll end up with eight. So now $100,000 or eight sellers, what sounds like more work? To me, $100,000 sometimes fears our agents out of success. Yeah. I have to work with eight sellers in the year. I have to close eight sellers in the year to make a hundred thousand. That seems doable. All right. Yeah, the daunting. next conversion rate. Huh? That doesn't sound daunting at all. Really? Eight. Eight doesn't right No. Now the next thing we are going to talk about is that first conversion rate. That conversion rate is pertaining to if you were to take a listing, look at the next line. If you were to take a listing, put the sign in the ground, market it properly, what are the chances that you're gonna take that to the closing table? And so while we are using an average that is uh, suggested on the, on the lower scale, your average may be 80% of my listings that I take go to closing. We're using a 65% ratio because in the book, you'll see that they say it ranges anywhere from 65% to 80%. Mm -hmm. And so we're just plugging in those numbers just to give you a kind of rough idea of how this works. You would have your own personally done with your own conversion rate. Yeah. So in this case, we're saying that 65% of the chance if we take a listing, it's going to go to the closing table. And if we do that math and we take eight mm -hmm. and we divide it by 65%, right. yep. we're going to have 13 listings taken in order for eight to go to the closing table. Yep. Stay with me because we just have one more is the next conversion rate is how good are we at the table? Well, when we go on a listing appointment, what are the chances that we walk away with the listing sign? And so in this one, we're using a high ratio. And you may say, you know what? In reality, mine would be flip-flopped. For every um, 10 listings I go on, I'm probably going to get six or seven. And then once I put them in the grounds and put them in the market, then 80% of the chance I'd so once again, those ratios are going to be yours. Mm -hmm. And so if it was an 80% conversion from table to signature, then we would say 13 divided by 80% and you'd be at 16 seller listing appointments. So now let's, we're not going to do the buyer side. I promise you, I'll save you from that. Except we plugged in the similar numbers, except reversing the 80 and the 65%. Yep. And once again, your average sale price on your buy side may be a little bit higher than your listing side. I know that's just how I was when I was an agent. And that's how we see a lot of agents business. You typically can sell a $500,000 house and somebody would give you their $300,000 listing. And so we work the business until we get to the point that we can have that even as well. So in this case, Matt, just to wrap it up and then I'll let you take it is this agent really only needs to design a plan if they intend on bringing $200,000 in gross commission in for the year, which we're saying will probably net them about $150,000. We're looking at them going on 16 listing appointments for the year. So I'm going to encourage you that if this is something that you think you can absolutely do, and, and even if you haven't gone on any listing appointments yet this year, can you get 16 listing appointments done for the next six, seven months? Yeah. I think you can. So yeah. I think that this model can work for somebody right now if we're gonna take action towards the market of the moment. Yeah, and, and Mary Beth, I think to to your point, you know, one thing that you said that I think people have to recognize is you have to know your numbers. You know, when you were talking about on the buyer side, you were talking about how your conversion rate when you were an agent for, for the buyers was 80%. You know, and but but if someone else is, if it's only seventy percent, 
that's okay, but it's, it's important to just know, um, as I pull up this graphic, just know your numbers, know what your, you know, changes year over year. If you're a brand new agent, then you're, you're kind of figuring that out as you're going. Yet, one of the things we've been talking about a lot over really the last two books of Shift and MREA is you have to know your numbers and you have to know and understand how that plugs into, you know, how many appointments you need to go on, how many appointments you need to get, how many leads you need to acquire in order to hit those numbers. Yeah. There's a um, there's a clip, and maybe I could find it. I know I have it on my phone. If you can help mm -hmm. me figure out how to get it out of there, um, by Jim Rowan, and he and it's um, the law of averages, the law of numbers. Yes. And I think I shared this on yesterday's call of something, but my father used to always say you can't compete. Yep. Um, but you can because if you know what your batting average is, yep. And like you're saying, if I have a seventy percent conversion ratio, and you have an eighty percent, well. If we go on the same amount of appointments, you're definitely going to beat me. But if I up my game a bit and I go on more appointments, knowing I have to make up for my for my skill that I'm building, I still have the chance of beating you. Yeah. And that's what we see a lot of times with our rookies of the years and our younger agents, younger in the business, meaning not age, but younger coming into the market right now. I mean, think about the mindset of an agent coming into the market right now. Yeah. Oh, I have to meet people on <laughs> on a virtual Zoom. That was never something that, you know, an agent who's older in the business had to get maybe comfortable with it. And some are not going to get comfortable with it. And they may get out of the business mm -hmm. because of it. Yeah. Because I think the customers are liking this kind of, you know, interaction until they absolutely have to have an in-person meeting. It's saving a lot of time for people. Absolutely. So, you know, um, I just think that understanding the economic model, get, like, levels out the playing field for you. So everybody's economic model is going to look different. To Matt's point, uh, that, that chart of knowing your numbers year over year, I'm going to tell you something. Your, your percentages might not increase. They might actually decrease, okay? Mm -hmm. And so this is one of my favorite, my favorite things when I ask somebody, and I know you know where I'm going with this. I know. Matt, <laughs> it's so true. Yes. Matt, yeah. uh, what's the percentage of, uh, if you were to go on a listing appointment, what's the, what's the chances you're going to get it? What's your percentage of conversion from table to signature? 80%. 80%? What about 90? I hear 90, right? Oh, 90%. I hear 100 sometimes. <laughs> oh, 100% of my listings. If I go at the listing appointment, then yeah. I'm going to get it. And guys, I think that's awesome. That means that you are a great agent, and that means you're not getting on, on enough appointments. Not, exactly. And I love when you say that because it's so true. And so I'm like, well, you know, I, 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 you know I, I'm 100% or whatever. And it's like, well, because you're not going on enough appointments to... Yeah you know, get turned down. And that the fallout, there's going to be yeah. fallout. If you're a true professional, you're not going to take on every client. You're yeah. not going to just, you know, you're not going to take on every client. That's number one. And number two is some people are not going to like you as yeah. their choice. If you're going on enough appointments, because if you're only going on the warm ones, my friend, my, the referrals, my friend has a listing, uh, this one, my neighbor needs to list. That's all great. It is. Um, it's just, if you really, really want to sharpen your ax, you'll start to add some other pieces to your business that you have to use your scripts. Yeah. You have to use your professional, um, you know, con con consult mode. Yeah. Well, no, and I was just gonna say, and that's really how this chapter ends, which is just saying, um, if you yeah. can't make a, a convincing presentation, deliver purposeful scripts or engage in effective dialogues, you won't be very successful no matter how many leads you may have. So yep. to your point, in terms of the conversion ratios and conversion rates, make sure that, you know, when you're not on these calls, you're, you have a role play partner, you have a script practice partner, you have a dialogue, you know, a partner where you can practice dialogues, because that's how you're going to, you know, practice for the, the real game, so to speak, the, the real appointment. Yeah, don't go practicing live on your only listing appointment that you got coming up this week or next week. Exactly. Don't do that. And that's often what we do. And, um, you know, just to that point, even as leaders, I was just on a mastermind call with some other team leaders in, in Connecticut, and we were role-playing what some of the conversations look like with agents that are not with our brokerage right now that may need some help. And so not that, and here's the thing, not that we'd be trying to trick somebody into doing something that they don't want to do, which is what Gary said. You're not, you're not going to trick somebody into listening their house or buying a house with you but the way you're going to win their business and the way i'm gonna you're gonna win 
people's business that are maybe not with us and, and, and look at us as a resource is just by being honest, truthful, and giving them everything we got so that they can make the best decision for themselves. So I want to encourage everybody, if you don't have an economic model, get on it. Uh, Matt, we can post it out. If you need it, shoot us an email, shoot us a message on Messenger. We'll get you what you need. If you want a, an individual consult, also reach out to us. I love economic model. Uh, it's real great when you throw in the million dollar model, which is what the book is intended for. Yep. Um, and you would see that if you plug in the million dollar number, we'd literally just be, um, you know, times those numbers by five, right? So if what, what was the number we ended up with 16 listing appointments? Yeah. Yeah. So take 16 listing appointments, times that by five. Yeah. What are we talking about? 80 listing appointments. 80 yeah. listing appointments in one year in New Jersey market with $500,000 average with the full out ratio of 80 and 65 is going to generate you a million dollars. Yeah. Well, I was gonna, and we're going to dive into that more uh, when we get to the MREA uh, economic model on page uh, 175. I'm so passionate about this. I guess. You're good. <laughs> but we'll, we'll definitely be able to, to come back to that. Um, and then tomorrow we'll chain, we'll shift gears to pages 133, which is the lead generation model. Yes. Um, we'll shift out of the economic model and move into the lead gen model tomorrow. Awesome. And tomorrow is Wednesday yeah. and then we have Thursday. So I'm thinking we might do something different on Thursday. I think we might pull some people on to talk about lead generation strategies for now yeah. and spend that, that Thursday half hour. So we do echo and lead gen this week. And really just come away on Thursday with some really great ideas of what we could be doing, what yeah. we are doing, and what's generating results. Yeah, I think that's a good. Okay, cool. I like that. And then move into the budget model and organizational model next week. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good with that. All right. Sounds good. All right. Bye, guys. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Bye.